Welcome to the Public Sector Marketing Show, a podcast for government and public sector marketing professionals who want to level up their digital marketing and social media knowledge, skills, and strategic thinking. And now, welcome your host, Joanne Sweeney. Hello, and welcome to episode 69 of the Public Sector Marketing Show. Instagram has gone all TikTok, and you're probably feeling a little bit left behind. Keep listening because I've got your public sector and government TikTok plan sorted. In this second episode of season four of the Public Sector Marketing Show, I'm sharing my views on the great meta maneuver, the transformation of the timeline as we know it. As marketers and comms professionals, you're probably feeling adrift, watching on as social media undergoes another chrysalis and every platform trying to become the top social media butterfly. The battle is real. So let's take this time to pause, reflect, and prepare to take action. As always, I have you covered. Coming up in episode 69, what I really think about Instagram and Facebook going all TikTok. Even Google is admitting that TikTok is taking its search traffic. Why TikTok needs to be front and center of your 2023 social media plan. So not only is Meta being affected by the rise in TikTok popularity, Google is also. And in some recent results and a statement from Google, they said that young people, and in particular Gen Z, are rushing to TikTok for search. In fact, that figure is at 40%. So 40% of Gen Z prefer to use TikTok and Instagram for search as opposed to Google. So what is it with TikTok and Instagram that has that appeal for search marketing when my generation goes straight to Google or indeed to YouTube? Well, the fact is that Gen Z prefer to watch content and not just read it. They feel that it's more authentic, it's more human, it's more relatable. Another fact is that it's the unpredictability of the search results. We know that Google's prowess is in the fact that it can match a search query with a search result. This has been flipped on TikTok. For any of you that are on the platform and have gone searching for anything, you will be quite surprised in many cases what you get. So the curiosity and the delight of the unpredictability of those search results on TikTok and on Instagram is really, really appealing to Gen Z. Now let's talk about the great meta maneuver as I describe it. So what is that, Joanne? Well, in fact, it is the shift from the traditional newsfeed and timeline of link articles, posts, photo albums, and text posts to a TikTok-like experience. There is no doubt that Mark Zuckerberg and co at Meta are feeling the pinch when it comes to TikTok's rapid growth. Facebook has experienced a drop in revenue and users for the first time in its 17-year history, with some commentators predicting the end of Facebook as a social network. I really wouldn't go so far as to say that. In fact, because it's been around for so long, it still is commanding a great share of social voice. But it has had to reorientate itself in response to consumer behavior and preferences by social media users. And we as communications professionals need to emulate that. So while we might be in our comfort zone of still posting web links on Facebook, carousels on Instagram, and landscape videos on YouTube, my friends, the social media landscape has evolved once again. And in order to remain relevant, we must reorientate our strategies. So the timeline is now becoming more like a TikTok experience. It's full video. It is a lot about humans. It's a lot about a conversation. There's a lot of insight in it. There's a lot of non-experts there um, influencing other individuals. That's a whole other show. But Meta is responding to consumer behavior. They're also responding to the market, 
commercially. And when the social networks do that, that is the first signal to communications professionals that you need to iterate to. I can't say I'm a huge fan of all my timelines becoming random videos based on a topic that maybe I was interested in last week. And then that topic just comes en masse on my mobile screen. But I do understand what is happening. It's the curiosity and the unpredictability and the discoverability of new creators who are willing to go front of screen. And that is going to be the difference between your organization being irrelevant or you changing, stepping into the TikTok world to create new uh, full screen content and making sure that citizens still want to engage with you and your message. Level up your social media skills by taking our diploma in social media, plus gain an industry qualification. Use the code SOCIALMEDIA20 for a 20% discount. Visit publicsectormarketingpros.com. So you're still dragging your heels on TikTok, or maybe it's your boss that's dragging his or her heels on TikTok. You think there's too much spam there. It's not relevant. I mean, who's the audience anyway? It's a global audience. We can't get right into our target country-specific demographic that we want to reach. There's too much noise there. And anyway, who's going to dance and lip sync on our TikTok videos? It's just not for us. So they are some of the most common concerns and objectives to government and public sector launching a TikTok account. Another one is actually the time and the skills and the capacity that it takes to put into creating your content and to growing that account. And trust me, TikTok requires a lot of investment in time. So with all of those arguments and all of those pushbacks, let's take a step back. So what are the implications of not being on TikTok? You miss out on being able to inform, educate, and advocate for topics relating to your organization. It is in the public interest that you are reaching all demographics. There's a very real opportunity to reach a younger audience. But more than that, it's time to upskill in creating short, interactive, and engaging mobile video content. Because the rewards are that if you engage with TikTok and you begin to produce videos that are getting interaction and engagement and growing your account, you can then take these videos and you can post them on YouTube as shorts, you can publish them on Instagram as reels, and then you can cross post them to Facebook as reels also. So the repurposability and the amplification and the expansion of your message in this content format is going to pay due dividends. When starting with any new social network, it's really good to test and to pilot a, an initial content plan. So what I would recommend is setting up your account, getting your brand name, doing some brainstorming on the tone of voice and the type of content that you're going to create. You almost all you also must figure out who is going to be the face and the voice of that TikTok account. And I would recommend potentially having a number of people. In an ideal world, we would have subject matter experts actually going front of screen. There's a lot of dietitians, even doctors on TikTok uh, in America, and they're communicating their expertise. And there's a real public interest value there. And for me, it is that they are hopefully going to have maximum share of social voice because they have the expert knowledge and we need to trust the evidence and the science in a world where misinformation is going faster than you can say digital transformation. Um, and then you need to get into creating your TikTok videos. And a surefire way to grow your account is to lean into trends. So you can do point of view videos, you can do listicle type videos with top five takeaways, and you can also do myth busting videos all of these trends give you an opportunity to speak and an invitation to speak to a captive audience. We already know that dwell time on TikTok is hitting about two hours a day. So the ability for you to command the attention and the trust of citizens is here. 
Um, and apart from all of that, it's the way social media is going. And again, if you're still stuck with web links, albums and carousels, I'm afraid your social is going backwards. A one-stop shop digital marketing and social media resource. Join our membership academy for 12 months. Access a library of how-to videos, template strategies, and organizational policies. Monthly live coaching. Attend webinars with subject matter experts. Meet and network with public sector pros from across the world. Use the code MEMBERSHIP20 for a 20% discount. Visit publicsectormarketingpros.com. In today's show, I'm joined by Carson Scooter from Scooter Social, and you are coming to us the whole way from Calgary in Alberta in Canada. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, yeah, you're so welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me on your show. Well, listen, I know TikTok is one of your favorite topics, so you were the perfect guest for this episode. First of all, tell us, how did you get into TikTok and what is your background? So it's, it's kind of funny. So I've been a social media manager for, it's got to be close to 10 years at this point. Um, but what had happened was when I was pregnant, my husband, Ben, he had actually been working at a full-time job and he decided to pick up TikTok just kind of as his own hobby. And while he was doing this, he actually blew up his account at the time to 90,000 followers in under 45 days. And so when that happened, we started talking and we're like, is it possible to do this for businesses? And so we started trying it out on a couple of our clients and we were having major successes with them. And so we were just so passionate about it. We decided to go full in with TikTok and short form video. And that's kind of how we ended up here. Well, I tell you, maybe you had some sort of a prediction because everything is about short form content and I, for one, am rethinking all of my social media strategy, but I have my own opinions on TikTok, but I want to ask you, I'm asking the questions today. <laughs> Why do you think TikTok is growing at such a phenomenal rate and eating in to market share of Meta's Facebook and Instagram? So I think, I mean, that's an amazing question. One of the, you know, the biggest reasons I definitely think is the fact that it's user generated content. So all of this content, it's so short, it's so easily digestible, but it's coming from real people. And people are being able to see, you know, behind the scenes, they're be being able to create these parasocial relationships with other people. And it's all coming through so authentic and transparent and people are just eating it up. It's amazing. So the listeners and the viewers to this show are quite conservative in their approach to social media for obvious reasons. But one of the pushbacks that I get all the time is, mm, Joanne, it's it's just young people. And while they do want to reach younger audiences, tell us, is it just young people that's using TikTok? So that is definitely one of the most common misconceptions that we get regularly. And it's totally understandable because when TikTok first came out, it was there was a ton of content that was singing challenges and dancing challenges. So right now there are over one billion active users worldwide. And there's everyone from lawyers to politicians to celebrities to influencers to the average everyday human being. And, you know, since the beginning of TikTok, it has now risen to over 66% of users on TikTok are actually over the age of 20. So that's a huge increase from where it started to where it is now. And that's growing daily. So there is definitely tons of room to educate, to entertain, to bring on influencers to your platforms. And there's so much growth that has happened from TikTok from the beginning that it is definitely worth yep. jumping in this early adopter phase right now. And how does it differ, do you think, to the other social networks and why is it getting so much of our attention? Well, I mean, there's so many different reasons, but a couple of them that stand out for us is that one, people definitely feel safe expressing themselves authentically on this platform. And it has just given so many people the ability to, you know, express their, you know, their viewpoints on different things that are happening in the world. It's given small businesses the opportunity to blow up their businesses. And, you know, I love TikTok's mission. It does actually inspire creativity and bring joy. And I do believe that is what um, creators on this platform are doing. Do you think there's a place for government and public sector agencies to have a voice and to make an impact on TikTok? Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. And I think that it is something that they for sure should jump on. 
as soon as possible. The reason being, and I mean, as many people may have noticed, there was a time and a place where Facebook and Instagram were going rapidly and you were able to get your voice out and heard and you were able to listen to the people. But as time has gone on, those platforms have become very saturated. And so TikTok is, you know, you're, you're reaching a new audience, you're reaching new people that are coming into the platform and you're helping them to, you're being able to educate them, you're being able to help address some fears and some misconceptions. And especially in the world of government and public sector, there are so many things and so many different viewpoints that people are saying from everywhere. If you can come on and be the expert, the credible source of information, people are going to, you know, feel even more reassured. And, you know, I know by working with these agencies that content is not something that they have in short supply. And Carson, if you got your hands and Ben got his hands on all the content that these guys have, you would have a field day. I honestly don't think that they realize the potential that they have. But one thing I also noticed, and again, this is something that makes my audience a little bit nervous, is that the less produced the video, potentially the better it will do. Talk to us about that. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, there is a place like YouTube and everything where you can have that more produced feel content. But TikTok is a place where people want to connect with people. And that is what that platform thrives on. So if you can show up authentically and just be yourself and not have all of the editing and the professional quality filming and you know, B-roll and all of that or as much, people feel more connected to it and they feel like they are actually genuinely getting to know the real you. And what about the trends? Because this is one of maybe the unique selling points of TikTok. Now, when we were on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram, we didn't have to keep up with all the trends. But talk to us about trends on TikTok and their importance. Yeah, so the trends are, you know, the popular, it could be dances, it could be, you know, different audios, there's so many different versions of trends that are happening on TikTok. But you know, there are two different ways to look at this is one jumping on the trends is going to help the algorithm. When people are watching more content and are binging on trending content, it's going to feed it in front of more people. So if you're able to, or you want to showcase your personality, maybe you have a bit of a humorous spirit, jumping on trends is an amazing way to get in front of new and more people. Um, you know, another thing is too, is even if you don't necessarily want to hop on the trend, it's important to kind of keep up with what the public is consuming, especially in your industry, because then you know what people are talking about, um, you know, what people are jumping on. And I think it is important, especially in government and public sector, to have an idea of what the public is, you know, interested in. Well, at the end of the day, they exist in the public interest. So if they're not taking notice, then, you know, uh, maybe somebody needs to ask questions of them. But what are the ingredients of a great TikTok? Uh, yes, that one's such a good question. And there is, you know, there is a formula that really works on this platform. And the very first piece of this formula is starting with a hook or leading with value. So what you can even do is you can go through, you know, your emails, or your phone calls, or your social platform questions. And you can take all of those questions and lead with those or lead with those fears that people are commonly, you know, messaging to your office. The next piece of it is you can eat, add the meat and the potatoes to it. And this is where you're going to add your value or you're ed going to educate your audience based on those questions or those fears or those misconceptions. And then the very last piece is really important. And so many people miss out, out on this opportunity is to add a call to action. So something as simple as follow for more is a great way to build your audience and build it quicker. And can you give us some examples of government or public sector agencies that you've come across that you are impressed by? Yes. Yeah, so there's three that stand out for me, um, you know, just from the top of mind is one is Ken for Florida. He is great at adding a combination of humor, of educating the audience, keeping people updated on current events. He's fantastic. Um, and then we also have... I hope I get this right. I believe it's uh, MEP Dr. Luke Adams. And he is fantastic at addressing the public's, you know, concerns. They send him in lots of questions and he just goes and talks about those. 
Um, and another one is Goldie Gamari. She's an MPP from Canada. She also provides great content on TikTok. Well, I'm going to go ahead and follow those. Thanks for the recommendations. And finally, we know that the TikTok, TikTok app is so versatile and the editing opportunities within it are quite remarkable. But are there any complementary tools or apps that you recommend to use alongside TikTok? Yeah, so there's a couple different ones that we like to use. And one of them is a TikTok app. It's just kind of uh, a little bit separate. So it is the TikTok Creative Center. And it is a great place to find out what's trending, the different hashtags. You can you know, customize it to where in the world you are. It's fantastic if you really want to optimize your content. And then if you're needing a little bit more editing options for um, your videos, a great place to go is InShot or CapCut. They're both great editing tools. Okay, so Carson, final words of advice because you've really, I think, whetted the appetite of our audience to maybe give TikTok a go, at least for a pilot. Um, what would you say to people who are just really scared and don't know where to start? Where should they start? You know, that's a great question. The first thing I would do is I would just scroll through the platform and kind of get a feel for what people are doing. The next thing is I would just be authentic and genuine and start talking to your audience. So think about who your target audience is, what you could potentially help them with, and then just give the shot. Just start addressing, you know, commonly asked questions or those common misconceptions. And that's a great place to start because then your audience will start feeding you more comments, more questions, and then you have direction from them. There. Wonderful. Well, listen, Carson Scooter, the whole way from Canada, thank you so much for joining us on the Public Sector Marketing Show. Oh, no problem. Thank you so much for having me here today, Joanne. Level up your digital skills by taking our diploma in digital marketing, plus gain an industry qualification. Use the code Digital Marketing 20 for a 20% discount. Visit publicsectormarketingpros.com. So far this year, we've had over 1,500 public sector marketing pros attend our free webinars, and I'm delighted to let you know that they are back for autumn, winter 2022. So go ahead and check out publicsectormarketingpros.com forward slash webinars and register yourself. If you miss the live webinar, you can always catch it on demand. And of course, our motto at Public Sector Marketing Institute is to lead with value for you. So we love giving you access to free content. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Public Sector Marketing Show. We're a finalist in the inaugural po podcast awards here in Ireland for best marketing podcast, which we are all thrilled about. So please do subscribe and share the podcast with a public sector pro that you know. So that's it for episode 69. I will see you on the next show. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Public Sector Marketing Show. This episode has ended, but your digital journey can continue. Head over to publicsectormarketingpros.com to access resources and links mentioned in today's show and to connect with Joanne and her team. Until the next time, be sure to subscribe, rate and review on your favorite podcast platform.